So anybody who's interested in algorithmic trading, in particular finding ways to identify whether we're in an upward trend, a sideways trend or a downward trend, and whether that's, you know, they should be placing trading uh, rules within that category. This is definitely the video for you. I, and, and in fact, this is going to be one of the best videos, I think, or most helpful videos I've ever made for this channel. Uh, and I mean that sincerely. So this is going to be great for you. If you're not interested in the algorithmic trading side, um, you know, just don't bother watching this video because it won't be fun for you. This is something I'm extremely, extremely excited about. So, you know, I've spoken in previous videos about M Marcos Lopez de Prado. You can read about him online. He wrote these books here. I mentioned to you about my cousin Jacques, um, you know, who had pointed me in this direction into some really, really useful tools. And, you know, one of the things that um, Jacques pointed out to me was this trend scanning method. And I looked at this and I thought, wow, this is really amazing. Like, how do I, you know, how do I integrate this and test it? And I have tested it and I want to actually test it live for you so that you can see just how big the difference makes adding um, what I'm going to call the trend scanning indicator. It's not really an indicator as such, I guess, but I'm going to add that in. Um, to a data set and show you what it does. It's absolutely incredible. You know, I think that identifying whether you're going to be in an uptrend, uh, a sideways trend or downtrend, or whether you are in one um, is actually one of the most valuable things you can have in algorithmic trading. You know, um, for example, buying on a moving average crossover is, you know, always going to be uh, a great strategy in an upward trend. But the, the key trick, the key question that we all struggle with is, well, how do we know we're in an upward trend? Really, how do we know it's likely to continue? And so we're taking an algorithmic approach to that. Um, so you would have just seen here on my screen, you know, I've got Excel here. This is a chart of the S&P 500. All I did was I pulled some data, downloaded it to Excel from Crypto Wizards. And I've got, you know, the close price of the S&P since 2001 all the way to today, um, you know, the 21st or 22nd of Feb uh, 2022. And, you know, here we've got um, some some columns that come with this uh, with this indicator as such, but the one I'm focused here on, on is the trend. And so this green, if you look down here at the moment, um, when I created this chart, I just added in this green time, uh, green series over here that represents that trend, which is essentially a bin. You know, is it zero? Is it one or is it minus one? Zero means, you know, we're like in a sideways market. Um, minus one is, you know, a downtrend um, and one is an uptrend. And actually, you can read about that here. I'll probably link this Medium article as well. It talks a lot about, um, you know, Marcos's stuff. Uh, I'm finding it, you know, as, a, as an amateur retail person, I, I just uh, I'm finding this stuff just mind blowing. And it just actually it just opens doors and it's just so useful. So I'm going to put some useful reading for you there. But this trend scanning method is what I'm focused on here. So if you read here, it says, you know, the trend scanning method does away with profit taking and st and stop loss levels, instead opting for labels based on a trend where one is an uptrend, zero is a no trend and minus one is a downtrend. And, you know, you know, I've not read through these books yet. I think I mentioned that previously, I'm very sort of hands on, I just want to plug something in and go, does it work? But the more I work with the stuff, the more I really want to spend the time to actually go through these books and, and understand this in better detail. Um, but so so here's a scientific method, right? We're going to deploy this trend scanning method uh, to the S&P 500 data, just like I showed you in Excel. Um, but one of the things we're going to do before we back test it is we're going to look at, is this actually, is this indicator worth its salt? It's not really an indicator, but I'm going to call it an indicator. You know, is this indicator or signal um, that that suggests we're in upward, sideways, or downtrend? Um, is it worth its salt? Is it useful? And you know, I was watching one of the the videos. I get a lot from them uh, from Hudson and Thames on YouTube, right? So obviously, I'm going to talk about what works. I think you know, my cousin stuff is next level. So I was learning a lot from there. And you know, one of his um, team members there in the video said, you know, back testing is not a research tool. Feature importance is. And this is Marcos de Prado's, uh, de Prado's uh, first law, right? Backtesting is not a research tool. Feature importance is. And so what I'm going to do here um, for you in this video, because I am excited about the results, is I'm actually going to walk through start to finish. Um, again, this is not a tutorial how to use the platform, but that's what I use for testing. So I'm just going to do that really quick because I don't think that's why you're here. 
uh, you probably just want to see the end result. For those of you who don't, don't want to watch to the end of the video, that's absolutely fine. Um, the, the result's quite a dramatic improvement in terms of accuracy and how much you can predict the S&P 500. Um, and, you know, I'm using the S&P 500. You could use anything. You could use Bitcoin. You could use, you know, um, cryptos, whatever, you know, different stocks. Um, the only thing that um, I haven't tested it on, for example, is like Forex. Um, but regardless, it's, it's really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the maximum amount of daily data we can on the S&P 500. I'm not going to change the data form. It's just going to be a time series of data. And what we're going to do is actually add in RSI. So RSI, you know, it's just a technical indicator, right? So if RSI is low, buy, if it's high, short, you know, that's the typical, you know, thinking behind RSI. It's like almost like a stochastic uh, indicator. Um, you know, if it's below a certain threshold, usually you're going long. Um, we're going to do RSI and we're going to test a strategy with machine learning um, to see if RSI is worth its salt on its own. And then we're going to add in this trend indicator and we're going to test it there and see if it's worth its salt with the trend indicator. Spoiler alert, it's pretty freaking cool. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to then go and move towards back testing to see, OK, well, cool. You know, we've done the feature importance. We've done the machine learning. You know, we followed Marcus's first law here, which I absolutely love. Um, you know, how does it actually look when you go and back test this? I love this stuff. I'm very excited by it. Um, you know, if you're still watching, you probably are too. So let's actually go ahead and, and start it. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete any other project files I've got. So I'm starting with blank data and I'm just going to go to my data builder. And, you know, the S&P 500 is an ETF um, that we use, you know, the SPY ticker. So if I put in SPY and I click on ETF, you can see this is the S&P 500 data. Uh, and I'm going to go and pull that data. I'm going to pull it for the maximum amount of time. And I'm going to pull daily data um, <laughs> just because I don't know. I just yeah, I like daily data. So I'm going to go with that. And then what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to add in RSI. So here, relative strength index uh, index. Sorry. And I'm going to call this file um, spy. And that's all I'm going to do. By the way, you'll notice there's this transform um, time bars to dollar bars. I've not done a video on that. That's brand new. It's a brand new feature. I'll do a separate video on that. But that's really good, if especially if you're doing intraday stuff. So I'm going to go here to data engineer. Here's my uh, spy data. And one of the things I want to do is now I want to delete a bunch of stuff that comes with this. So I'm going to delete the VWAP and you know all the stuff that comes as default. But I'm going to add in you know, some other stuff very quickly. So the first thing I want to do here is just delete stuff I don't want. Uh, the quickest way I find to do that is to select everything to delete. So here I'm on delete and I'm just going to uh, uncheck the stuff that I want to keep, right? So I want to keep um, RSI, volume, close, etc. Let's just move on with it uh, and delete that. Okay, so I've got rid of a lot of what I'm just going to call the noise and I've got a basic data set now for show you, you know, open, high, low, close, volume, RSI. That's it. Here's my data set. It starts on the 7th of December 2001 and it ends on the 18th of Feb um, 2022, of which we're now at the 22nd of Feb, right? So that's where we're at. And we've got um, 5,086 rows. So we've got a plenty of data to work with here, right? This is a good amount of data. And so what I'm going to do now is, that, well, the first thing that I want to actually go and do is I'm going to uh, add in the returns. So, you know, the first thing I want to do is just select all of these. And I'm just going to calculate a return, which means going to take current day divided by previous day stuff you would have seen on this channel, you know, very often. Uh, if I look at the data, you can see it's missing a day because obviously it starts here. Um, but, you know, here it is. Here's the, here's the return. And this is much more, you know, useful for a machine learning model. So I'm just going to throw a bunch of features at this. Basically, I'm not just going to do the RSI. Now what I'm going to do is go over here to my TA and in my TA technical analysis, I could add, I could have added RSI here. I just chose to do it when I ran the data, but I'm going to add in this, right? This is the trend scanner. And I have kind of not really played with the window too much. It's based on, I've, I've used it to, to, I've used the signal within trend scanner to, to be based upon moving average um, uh, signal information. And here I'm just going to use a window of 12. It's kind of arbitrary. It's academic. You can select kind of whatever window you want to use. 
but I'm just going to add that in. And honestly speaking, if I was to tell you the detail about how this indicator works, I wouldn't be able to. Like, I just couldn't tell you right now. I'm just kind of building on the shoulders of giants and, and I'm at the start of this process myself. So, you know, so here we go. We've got, I say building on the shoulders of giants. I'm just, I'm stealing all their great stuff and testing it out and really enjoying it. So here we are. So we've got that trend indicator added in. So if I go back to my table here, you can see here it is trend zeros. Right now you're showing zeros because I'm showing the top five and bottom five rows of data. One of the things I do is like when there's these extra columns, I know I'm not going to need, I'll just delete them. So here I'm going to go to this moving average, the entry, the trend start, the trend end. And I'm just going to delete those. I'm going to keep trend in because that's got the bin. It's got the zero, the one, uh, etc. in there. So I'm just going to keep that. Now, the other thing I want to do for machine learning purposes is add in a target. So, you know, I'm going to I'm going to assume that this is more of a swing trading type strategy. I'm using daily data. So I'm going to say, you know, if RSI is low, then let's buy and, you know, let's let's assume that the price should be higher within the next 10 time steps. So I'm just going to keep it really, really, really basic. Um, I like basic. I'm a simple person. So that's what I'm going to go and do. And the way I'm going to do that, the way I'm going to add this in is I just go to this conditional and I say, look, if the close, you know, 10, 10 time periods in the future is greater than the close today, that's going to be my signal. So I'm going to call this, you know, target and I'm just going to put underscore 10 because it just it's, it's helpful for me to know it related to 10 time periods in the future. If it is greater in the future, I'm going to put a one. If it's not, I'm just going to make a default to zero. Very similar stuff to what you've seen before. I'll add that in as a condition and I'm just going to go and run that. So that's going to add in um, what we'll call the, the target variable, basically. So if we go over here now and look at our data table, right, we've got our, all our return columns. We've got the trend column. You know, we've got our target column as well. The only thing I feel that might be missing is probably some time steps. So I'm going to take all of our sort of return and RSI data here, and I'm going to say, and even trend, and I'm going to say, um, you know, sorry, let me just highlight those again. I'm just going to say, uh, you know, show me what they were the day before as well. Like, let's see what the change on the change was. So if there is any sequence in the data, the model, the machine learning model can, can take advantage of that. And so that's basically what this is going to do. Um, and the, the last thing I want to do here is I just want to drop any NAs. I'm going to get rid of any like missing data because we're working with rolling moving averages and stuff, you know, um, so you can see now there's no missing rows. It's just deleted those for where, for where the data kind of had only just started, right? So that's, that's all there. So we've got a nice clean data set. Starts with the 11th of December, 2021. It goes up to the 18th. Um, as well. And I think the reason it's the 18th is, is it a bank holiday yesterday? I, I don't know, probably. Uh, I know that uh, my son's off school uh, on half term, so probably. But anyway, that's, here we go. We've got our data set here. Now, one of the things I want to do is I'm actually just going to create an exact copy of this. I've got my copy of SPY, which I'm going to call this SPY for backtesting. And I've got my SPY here, which I'm just going to call, you know, my SPY for machine learning. And so I've just renamed those two files. They're both exactly the same file. But now what I'm going to do on my machine learning one is um, I'm actually going to go and take away the data that uh, isn't really involved in there being a signal. So for example, what I mean by that is if I look at the RSI, so here's the RSI here, I can see that, you know, in the in the lower part of the data, the lowest kind of well, the lowest data point for RSI was 16. So that was the lowest RSI has ever been in like the last 20 years. The maximum was 87. The average is 54. In the bottom sort of percentile, it's 44 and 52 in the 40th. So I'm going to pick a number between these two that tells me RSI is really low. In other words, that's a, that's a good number uh, to go with because RSI is really low. It, it should be a good buying opportunity, right? That's, that's the hypothesis we're going to go and test here. And so there's a new feature actually I've added in to make that really easy here where I'm just going to say, look, uh, so you've got to filter uh, value comparison. So this is just saying, you know, pick a, a, a feature and say if it's greater or less than, et cetera, a certain value. What I'm going to say is only keep the data. And this is why I've saved two data sets because it's going to delete everything else 
and I wanted everything else later for back testing. So I'm going to say, you know, for RSI, if the value um, of the currents, so I'm going to put that to zero, of RSI is less than or less than or equal to 47, because that's sort of between the 20% and the 40% percentiles of the data in other words that's the threshold i want to go with it, you know if rsi is below 47 buy that's what i'm saying basically um, that i'm going to want to play with so i'm going to add that in as one of the conditions and the only condition there and when i do that what you're going to notice now is our data goes from there being 5,000 rows to 1343 so it's deleted any rows of data where rsi was above 47 because we're only interested in the signal so what we're going to do here, and this is purely for machine learning, we've kept the other data set where we don't have any deleted rows, um, but we want to start with the feature importance, right? Going back to Marcos here, back testing is not a research tool, feature importance is. So we're going to do that first. Um, and again, if you haven't seen this kind of thing before, you'll be like, this is going to be so much fun. So, uh, so here's the data set. We've got it here. We can see if I look at the RSI, that number is always below 47. You'll see there's no rows where it's above, and that's what that filter here does. Which means now when we, we go to our machine learning model, we're going to tell it to predict, where's our target? Here we go. Here's our target. We're going to tell it to try to predict what this column should be. And we're going to give it all this data here to make that decision on. So it's not going to know. I'm not going to go into the detail because I've just done literally two hours worth of videos on this channel explaining how machine learning works. Um, so if you are interested in the detail, definitely watch those. But uh, here, this is we're going to give this to the machine learning model and say, learn how to predict this. So we're going to learn. We're going to tell it to learn with the RSI to see if it can figure out how to predict ten days in the future. Will it be up or not? Is it a good trade? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select here. You know the machine learning version there. Target 10 is what we want to predict. And I'm going to throw everything at it. Actually, I'm just going to take out the kind of useless stuff. So open, high, low, close, volume. I'm going to just take that out. I'm going to take trend out because this first test we're going to do is just a control test, right? How does, how does our model perform without the trend information, right? Let's go and find out. So yeah, I think that's fine. Reporting 5% of the data. I think here I'm going to bump this up to 80% time series. And I'm going to call this, you know, test one and let's just see how it performs and there we go now so this is actually really good okay this is a very good result um uh, i don't look at accuracy here because this is a trading strategy um from the previous series we just did precision is what's really important this is how many longs i i actually placed or hypothetically this is how many longs i would have placed that actually came through and so 60 call it 67 percent of the time you've got a you know, standard deviation of say 6%. So it's it's roughly 60%, right, on the nose, it's okay, 60% plus. Uh, if we look at our curves here, we can see this is actually, from an accuracy perspective, it's a lot worse than random. But if I look at the precision recall curve or the AUC precision recall, it's above 60%, it's actually really good. So in terms of figuring out whether you wanna place long positions or not, um, this could be, this could be a very interesting model. And, it, and in fact, what I want to do here is I'm going to give it zero reporting data. I'm going to give it even more juice in the training there. So, you know, 85% for training, 58%. So I'm getting very similar results. I've taken the kind of reporting step out, 58%. Now let's go here again. I'm actually going to refresh here just to show you from scratch what we're going to do. Keep that number in mind, 58%. What we want to do now, and here's the test one, you can go and see the data, etc. But now what I want to do is the same test again, I'm going to select all the features, but this time, I'm going to include the trend and the trend T1. Again, I've taken these features out, but I'm going to include that indicator to say, you know, are we in an upward trend or not? Time series, um, reporting data, I'm not really interested in it right now, but I'll put there, I'll put it there. Here, I'll stick it to, I don't know, 80, 80%, 85. It doesn't really matter right now. And here, I'm going to put this, I'm going to call this test two, right? So that's test two. Let's just run it. Now we've got the trend information in and check this out. Like this is literally light years um, better than it was before. Now you could argue there's a lot of standard deviation here and it might depend, um, change based on how I tweak this 
So for example, you know, I might just say actually take 85% like we did before. Does that, you know, does it give it more training data to work with? I, I, I don't know. But basically I'm getting pretty much the same results. Um, the precision on a zero and a one is really strong. This is phenomenal. Uh, this, you know, we went from like 58% to 70 to 80% accuracy, which I think is absolutely incredible. You know, here it's got 68% on a very small amount of data because I, I didn't give it much um, reporting data. I, I could ex increase the reporting data and maybe I'll increase this as well just because there's always a trade-off with data. Um, so I can play with it. But the point is, every single time I do this, well, actually when I do that, the precision on the test data wasn't very good, but it was excellent on the reporting data. Uh, and here I can compare the two, right? And the reason is because look, my test data has very little to it. So here what I now need to rely on is my reporting data, right? It's got far more samples to be based on. So it's really freaking accurate. And <laughs> well, it's really accurate and it's just an RSI, uh, you know, it's just RSI and, you know, we've added it in with this trend. And so now what we're going to do is look at the feature importance, going back to here, you know, feature importance is, backtesting is not a research tool, feature importance is. Look at this, the trend from the day before, the trend indicator from the day before and the current day are the two biggest contributing factors to the success of this model. So let's go down here and let's take everything else out. Let's just train with those two features. That's it. Maybe I'll stick in the RSI return as well. Maybe. Let's just go and do that anyway. Let's stick that in. Um, I don't know. Reporting data. Okay, we'll put this to 15%. And this I'm going to put to, uh, sorry, uh, 80, 90. What did we have it on? 90. I'll stick it at 85. I'm not being very scientific there. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to call this test three. Um, but once you've determined what features are useful, go back and remove the features that aren't because your model will, well, your model should actually perform better. And let me just see which sample I want to be looking at. Yeah, the reporting sample's got basically more sample data, so it's more reliable here. My precision is extremely good, right? And if I look here, yep, the trend minus one and the trend, these are, and by far the trend from the day before is the biggest contributor. Mind blowing. So it's it's very difficult to see something like this and then do anything else. It's like it's very hard for me to to now justify not somehow including this indicator when I'm when I'm researching backtesting or machine learning, etc. But it doesn't stop there. What I now want to go and do is actually just go and backtest this. And if you think about it, we've got two files, right? So um, basically, did, did we look at the curve here as well? Well, here's the curve, sorry, too, as well. So you can see here it performs uh, less well, but uh, basically more well <laughs> on the ROC curve with the more false positive rate, whatever. Um, the precision to recall, uh, AUC precision recall is really strong. And actually the AUC itself or trading strategy is really strong. I actually think this is the strongest I've seen in any strategy. It's, it's looking really good. Um, so what I'm going to do here is go to back testing. And I'm going to take my, first of all, my backtesting uh, file we saved where we don't have any deleted rows, right? It's got all the time steps. And that's what we're now going to use. Um, and we're going to test this out backtesting. So what I'm going to say is, okay, um, you know, if the RSI is less than or equal to 47 was the number that we chose, go long. And I could put, uh, you know, uh, close my long if it's greater than X number, I could do all that, but I'm just going to be consistent with the machine learning and say, you know, close it in 10, in 10 periods, right? Just do that. Um, so th that close position is in. Uh, here we go. RSI is less than or equal to 47. It's going to go long. Um, there we go. And I'm going to do my usual. I'm just going to take out commission costs, etc. because again, this is more of a pure test. What is my win rate? What is, you know, how does this perform versus another strategy without taking into account all the mechanics and execution issues, which you should always test. But for the example here, they're not helpful. So I'm going to go and run this and I'm going to call this back test one uh, and run that. Now I'll pause the video for a second because this will take probably about 40 seconds. Um, so I'll just let that run. Okay, so if we look at the results here, this is actually pretty good anyway. 
We've got a 61% win rate, our uh, return on uh, investment of 101%, um, which is worse than the buy and hold, right? If you had just bought 20 years ago, ago and held the S&P, you didn't beat that, okay? But it's still positive, um, not a great sharp ratio at all, whatever. So, so these are the results over here. Um, if I look at the file, for example, uh, and we just open that, uh, here you can see it here, right? Here's what the price of the S&P did. And here's what our account balance did. And you can see it very much mimics the S&P's performance. Um, and in fact, it didn't quite perform as well. So, so that's without the trend information, right? That's just trading RSI. Now, let's add in the trend information. So down here, I'm going to add another condition. I'm going to say, look, if the trend, T1, because I think that's the one the machine learning model really liked, uh, in other words, yesterday's trend. If that number is greater than zero, in other words, if it's one and it's suggesting we're in a long trend, go long. So I've added that in. So the way that uh, the backtesting, I haven't spoken much about backtesting. You know, this is still like one of my sort of secret tools, which I'm I'm developing and working on and using a lot. Um, but I love it. And it's it's really cool. And so what this does is when you have two positions which are the same, all of them have to be true in order for it to place a trade. So the more criteria I add in, the more checks it does. So you can be really nuanced. So I'm saying, look, you know, dude, place a trade if the RSI is, a, is below, um, less than or equal to 47, and we're in an upward trend, you know, and the, the data is suggesting we're in an upward trend, then and only then do a long. And so everything else will keep the same. I'm gonna call this back test two. And we'll run that. And again, I'm just going to pause this. This will take between 40 to 60 seconds. Um, actually, it shouldn't take as long as before because there's... No, it'll take the same. It'll take the same. Okay, and here we go. So, <laughs> like, I, I think this warrants a lot more investigation because the results actually look too good. Um but my sharp ratio has increased dramatically. It's still not a great ratio. I need to check the calculation of this too, because it always seems to be really low. But the, the win rate is 76%. And the ROI is ginormous, right? So let's have a look at this file over here. So if we go and look at uh, opening here, look at that. If you stayed for this much of the video, like you deserve to see this because it's like, this is incredible. This is absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, I've not put any criteria around, you know, martingale strategies to hide, you know, drawdowns, etc. Like, this is incredible. Look at this return. Um, so what I'm going to do is come out of this and, and take it with a pinch of salt, right? This is back testing. Things can look great like this, but go terribly wrong. Let's let's try and improve this and let's come up with a more realistic scenario. So let's put in some, you know, commission rate. Um, let's put in some slippage as well. Um, spread or what actually, whatever, slippage or spread, I'll choose one of those, I'll add them in. And let's also let's also say that close close any positions when the loss exceeds 5%, right? So let's make sure our drawdown doesn't get as bad as 25%. We don't want to be more than 25% underwater, or we don't want to be more than 5-ish percent underwater, right? So let's actually go and run that um, again and see how that comes out. Okay, and the results are here. So our ROI is obviously dramatically lower. You know, 92% of our initial capital ended up in trading costs because we put in trading costs. But our max drawdown was only 9%. The reason it's 9% is, remember, you're not in a real live trading environment, right? You only have the next close and the model assumes you get that next close price. Um, so the drawdown was, you know, obviously worse than the 5%, but not nearly as bad as the 25%. Regardless of that, this is still performing phenomenally well. And all we did, literally, all we did was we said, use this trend indicator to um, to determine whether we're in an uptrend or not. And if we're in an uptrend, then place the long position. And we'll take one more look here, you know, at the file. We can go and open that 
and we see the same pattern just now with trading costs and more risk management. So you you know uh, for those of you on Crypto Wizards, of course, you can go back once you've done that. You'll have you know a bunch of files here as well from the tests you've been running. You can go and play with those, etc. Um, but I think the key point here is look if we go back to the original graph here. If you can find a statistical way of figuring out what kind of trend you're in, I think it gives you a, a significant edge. Even if it was 2%, I would have been excited by it. And I'm seeing the benefits way more than 2%. You know, in, in the S&P 500, which is, you know, should be truly random, but it does just go to show that, you know, you can, you can uh, find an edge, right? You just need to use the right combination of things. You need to remove any signals for the machine learning part that you're not considering in your strategy. Um, and when you're backtesting, always have a control, both for your machine learning and your backtesting, always have a control um, with and without that indicator you're putting in to see, you know, to benchmark how well is it actually doing. Um, I don't know if any of you got as excited about this as I do. I know some of you will. Um, so definitely, if you want to punch in a comment, I'd love to respond to you. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care and talk soon.